actually uh, got paralysed from it. Probably, that was probably the scariest moment of my life, eh? Seeing mum break down on her knees, that's, that's what got me. Yeah. Yeah. I never learned about our money. Oh, selling them all these dreams. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just slaves down there. What are you doing for Mahi at the moment? I'm doing a building apprenticeship. Oh, yeah. It's roughly four years. I'm, I'm, I'm a mystery and I'm, I've, I can see my own company. It's going to be called Shaka Builders. Shaka! Yeah, that's, that's the one. I've got a quite, a good, quite a good relationship with the boss. Like, giving me shit, I'll be holding it in. He's like, just racing me all day, every day, for a good year. And after that, I was like, yeah, nah. <laughs> No comebacks. No, comebacks on, I started racing him back. <laughs> and a few times I've left him speechless, he goes, oh, shit. <laughs> he just walks off. <laughs> he goes, you gotta remember I'm your boss, eh? Now, bro, when you've been out surfing, what's some of the meanest waves you've been on? So this one time we were out shippies, late afternoon. We call it the Lego. Yeah. We call it the late afternoon glass off. The Lego, even the sun setting. And we had these big swells coming in. It was clean as, and you just caught those waves and flip everything just slows down as. It's like you become become part of the wave almost. And that's just, that's the best feeling. It's hard to describe it, but that's one of the best feelings ever, I reckon. Music much a big part of your life? Yeah, yeah, I love, love music, eh? Yeah? Yeah. Did a few gigs a couple of years ago. Oh, true that? Yeah, with the onks, Troy Kingy. Oh, true. Yeah, he pretty much taught me everything I know about music. Not something that you wanted to carry on doing the muso? I definitely wanted to, eh, but at the time we were doing it was when I just started my apprenticeship, but, so I kind of had to make the hard decision. Oh, this one time, though, this big American fella, he goes, man, bro, the way you played that bass was beautiful. I was talking to him, and I was like, hey, who's this guy? And he starts hugging me and stuff. I was like, oh, shucks, okay. Just hugged them back and I was like, he said, like, man, you're still beautiful, man. I was like, oh, thank you. And I left and went back, back, back to Uncle Troy and I was like, I was like, oh, this big ass dude just like hugged me. He's like, do you know who that is? I was like, nah, bro. He goes, bro, that's the bass player for the Commodores. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, your life's been pretty carefree then, Neff. Yeah, pretty good. I just love living, living life boys every last day. Yeah. Because yeah, probably when I was, when I was 12, I think, I think I was, I had a bit of an accident. Yeah? Yeah, I, I dove into a pool with no arms and hit the bottom of the pool with my head. And uh, it hit my head and it caused a stroke. It caused a stroke and actually I uh, got paralysed from it. Paralysed from it. Two days after that, once they told me, I like got feeling in my left, my right hand again. Yeah. Within a week, I was fully recovered. Well. Yeah. And just from there on, I just realised that I don't know. I suppose life's short. Yeah. My blood vessel in my neck kinked. Like got a little bend in it now. Yeah. And um, this, I got a blood clot to my brain, which is what caused the stroke. I had to get the nurses to wash me. I couldn't even, I couldn't even wash myself. Wow, well, yeah, man. Yeah. That was probably the scariest moment of my life, eh? Yeah, I bet, man. Being in there, seeing mum break down on her knees, that's, that's what got me. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was scared for myself, but I felt sad for, felt, felt sad for them, because, I don't know, I suppose their boys not going to be lucky was a few days ago. Yeah. You still get some long-term effects from it? No, nah, I'm, I'm pretty good now. As I've just got to take the aspirin, the blood thinner, to um, just to keep me keep my blood thin, so I don't have another stroke. Every every Kiwi boy wants to grow up playing rugby, you know. Yeah, I still I was just gutted I couldn't play rugby. Eventually, I found Wakama, got into that hard, started playing basketball, started playing volleyball and eventually got into the gym. I suppose after doing that, I realised that there's more to life than rugby. I definitely want to slow down and just live life in the music. It's the plan to go live in Hawaii, play some gigs over there. But this one time at a gig, eh? 
we finished and was, I went down into the crowd. And because that night we had a bar tab, so I was going hard. And this, this, girl, this girl comes up to me and she goes, because I was pretty whacked by then. <laughs> and she, come, she comes up to me and she says, oh, they, they, your, the way they, your fingers moved on that bass. <laughs> and, I was, and, I, and by then I was just like, oh. <laughs> I just left her. You had nothing? No, I had nothing. I don't know what to do. She gave you stage fright. Yeah, it shook me. <laughs> High school days. Hey, Joe. Oh, this don't freak me out. And the girls talk to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, hi, how are you? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you like these days with the girls? Oh, man. But suave. Yeah. Gone from hi to hello. <laughs> <laughs> Well, originally I wanted to go, um, I wanted to go travel Europe, eh? Hey? Like, it's still up in the air, but COVID, COVID struck. Yeah. I just want to go and, I suppose, experience something different to Kitty Kitty. <laughs> Sharks. You've just been here my whole life. Pretty me. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs>